Hi, I'm Zeke, KJ7NLL, and today I'm going to show you the most amazing video that this channel has ever made. Okay, so in this video I'm going to be explaining this thing and what it does. Now, I'm sorry, this video is a bit delayed, as you can see, but it will be fine for the purposes of showing you what is going on. So, let's get right in. Now, in the, uh, when we started Ham Radio and when I was eight, the entire reason that we did it was so that we could contact the International Space Station. Now, um, recently ha we have been in touch with a lot of people from Corvo and uh, we just learned about Orsat. So, we are going to be tracking the Orsat satellite today, Orsat Zero, which is right here. I just decided to put a little piece of masking tape with Orsat Zero on my shirt. And this is a Corvo shirt. So both things all combined in one. Anyway, uh, enough about the shirts. Um, so uh, this thing over here can track satellites. That's what that antenna looking thing that's like a helical antenna is for. And so how about we track some satellites? All right, so uh, the way this works is if you look in the right camera, which will show you the uh, rotor over here. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to, which is actually this thing. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to do sat load. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just go to Celestrack. This is an online resource that uh, we use for uh, satellite TLEs. Uh, TLEs are used to track satellites based on time it is and the point places. So here we have Orsat Zero in here, and we're just going to hit enter. And this tells you the epoch as an OB star, blah, blah, blah. And, and it tells you all the specifics about the satellite. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to do sat, pause. And as you can see in here, uh, the antenna, it will now be tracking. And it's going to go to negative 46. So the target, let me explain to you what these numbers are. So right now it's watching. What we like to call watching because it's flashing once a second. Okay. So it's flashing once a second because we want to see the updated version so not have to type up, enter, up, enter, up, enter a bunch of times. When uh, this video is posted on YouTube, it will uh, there will be a link for uh, GitHub to this in the description below. So, uh, Orsat Zero is at negative 45 degrees, and that's its target, by the way, is very straight on. So, it is at negative 45 degrees on the elevation, and negative 41 degrees on the um on the theta. So actually uh, the azimuth is what we want to be looking at, not the lat. Um, the lat lon is other stuff. Now we did not write the code that actually looks at the satellites and I want to give a big thank you to Neocles, who 5B4AZ, who made the uh, the code that actually tracks and calculates the position of the satellites. So that is what's making it possible to see over here that this is where Orsat Zero is. Now let's track something a bit bigger. Like, for example, the ISS. The entire reason that we started Ham Radio. Okay. So now we're just going to go over to here and go over to 
Control F I S S. This is how you'll do it. I know you can't see it, and I'm sorry about that. But okay, now we're just going to do Escape over here. We're gonna highlight it. Then we're going to do Sat Load, hit Enter, and middle click. Now we hit Enter, and we can see all the things about this. Now. We did this today, but if you have it open for like a week or a day or, or um, a month even, uh, you'll need to, you want to reload because they post new these every day. Um, the low orbit that the ISS and have, they have to fire thrusters to keep themselves from just their orbit's so low that they have to fire thrusters to keep themselves from falling into the earth. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to do sat pause. And this will take us to the ISS. So as we can see, the elevation is negative 11.2. And the azimuth is... 192 and that's amazing because 10.9 10.8 we might actually see it go up for a second and we do not see things go up that often I mean uh, they don't go up that often so uh, you're really seeing um, some pretty special stuff here they don't go up above that often so we don't not really during the day at all. There's not many PMs that it happens mostly in the AM. And so now that you have seen all this, here's some extra stuff. That that's where it is, by the way. So now we're going to just do a reset, and this will take us to my position that I already uh, programmed into this which you can program by doing flash right see that alright or flash save type flash or help to see how it works and so when I reset it keeps the flash because it's flash memory. So uh, what we can do here is um, we can see like all the things that we can do here, like sat. These aren't all finished yet at the time of publishing this video, but uh, in, uh, in just a bit, they'll, they'll be ready and they'll all be working here. Um, so now this tells you the flash en entries just stuff about flash to make sure it's working debugging um and so now i'm just going to show you like uh the how you do the date so date is very important for um setting uh ha up how you do the how you how it knows where the satellite is like the date the date for the satellite. So now let's see how it works. So date read gives you the immediate information from the RTC, which is this this thing right here. This is the RTC real time clock, and this is a potentiometer for debugging that we don't use very often. Uh, now, this green thing back here that we call it the rocket board, but really it's the motor controller. And what it does is it uh, turns on and off the motors. Well, these and this here is the brains, this little chip. It's, a, it's very, very small, about that big. And it's the brains, and it controls everything. So, um, let's do some more. So, now. Um, what we need to do is set the date before we can track anything. Otherwise, it will revert to January 1st, 1970. You can either do date, uh, date set by entering the date here. Year, month, day, hour, minute, second. Um, or you can just do Unix time. 
this thing. Uh, number second, 6th January 1st, 1970. Um, so, now what we're going to do is we are going to, after doing that, make sure our PIDs are calibrated. So, we are going to do to rotor detail, uh, rotor theta detail just to give you an example and then we want to make sure that all these are calibrated uh, my dad wrote a um, simplex algorithm um, which also gives uh, allows us to see uh, it well it allows us to optimize where what these things are doing and where uh, and it moves 45 degrees for theta and phi, and it optimizes these numbers so that we get we get the best numbers here. Uh, like we get the best output so that it doesn't go because uh, you don't want that to happen. Right now it's pretty stable, but it isn't always that stable. So now. Um, we can see the oscilloscope in here, and what it's doing is it's just seeing the PWM. So as I go and do, so as I do, um, well, you can. I don't have to do anything. You can see it's on, off, on, off, on, off, and that's for fee. The top one's for fee. The bottom one's for theta, as suggested. Up here, top one for C, bottom for theta. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure uh, it works. So we can just like test using Celestrack. There will be a link for this in the description below, as I said. Um, and we're just going to do a simple ISS test what I like to call it. So we're going to do sat, we're going to highlight it and do sat pause and then do, well, okay, so I have to stop this because it's going crazy because I did sat pause and it's going to somewhere it's not supposed to go. Also, this wire is getting all tangled up, so I have to fix that too. Um, so now what I need to do is, uh, we have an emergency on off switch just in case it goes crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sat load and enter a simple ISS test and then hit enter. And then we're just going to do sat pause and see where it is. So LE 5.4. Uh, so the ISS is in the sky right now, and we need to make sure that these things are fully in. So, um, it is above the surface. Um, and when it goes crazy like that, just hit the reset button and it'll all figure it out, figure itself out. And you do have to reload it, but um, yeah. Uh, so it is above the ground and it's going down pretty fast. Um, but if you look outside, at the time that this video was being recorded, it would be just above the horizon. Now, <coughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video about how this cool thing works right here and about how the EWM works in the oscilloscope and everything that goes into making this all work. Uh, this is the Lego motor that I made uh, in another, in a different one of my videos that I will be making soon. and. <coughs> Uh, we go into more detail about that in the next video. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I and thank you for watching. And I hope you guys have a great.